Hey guys, welcome back to the Rust Beginner Tutorial on Coding in Crypto. And today we're going to talk about enums. So you got a little taste of enums in the last video, right? We talked about options and we said that options and match were some of the coolest parts about Rust. And options are an enum. So what does that make enums? Enums are super, super powerful. And a big part of Rust actually relies on enums. So we're going to go into some detail here on how you use them. And we'll also give like a high level overview of exactly what they're doing in a memory sense. So first to define an enum, like you saw, we're going to create this stoplight enum and we're going to have green, yellow, and red. And now we talked about the match function or the match keyword in that last video. And you saw with options how you can match. And like I said, you don't have to handle like a wildcard case or like a not match case because enums have a definite list here. There's, there's only these amount of values it could be. So if your function is expecting an enum, like if we write read light and we say that we're going to get this variable light and it's going to be of type stop light, which is an enum, then your match case knows like, okay, there's no way that if we get an enum, it's going to ever be anything besides these because that's not possible. Rust wouldn't let it get that far. So what we're going to do is we're going to match this entry, this light value to whatever kind of type of enum that we get and return some kind of value. So let's just return a string. And then we're going to say, all right, match light and now we want to take a look at the possibilities that this could be any of those values so what we want to say is if it's stop light green then we're gonna say go to string and I think you can guess what we're gonna do here but if it's yellow we're gonna do slow down and if it's red yep you guessed it stop so pretty cool now that's all you have to do and like I said because rust knows that it can only be any of these values you've already bound it to the possibilities that are represented by this enum that's an integral part of memory management and of handling like nulls, like there's no null in this situation. Like this function can't see a null. So pretty neat. But anyways, right, let's print this out. Let's go with the, I like to keep all these functions separate so I could just copy it onto GitHub for you guys. But let's do our read light function and see, it's already telling us like, hey, make sure you put in this enum here. We're gonna do stoplight green and of course we're going to print out each of those and run this guy and we'll see what that does slide into our guy again here and see we get each of those things so that's how you can use an enum and a match to kind of like dictate different things about your program. And again, this is another thing that you can expand on. Like you can make these be full functions and expressions in there, not just like return values. So there's a lot you can do there. But enums can actually get a lot more advanced than this. This is what's called a unit type enum. And at a high level, what that means is basically this like English word, like this human readable word doesn't mean anything to the compiler. It's just so you can represent it with your code. But there's an underlying value behind these that points to different parts of the memory of the app. And without going into like excruciating detail, these are just like representers. And they enable you to write stuff like this in a nice simple way. Now, what we're going to look at is a different type of enum where you actually have things like functions present in the enum. You have like structs that can be in these places here. 
and then it works with the memory a little bit differently. So we're going to take a look at how these are written. We won't dive too much into the memory stuff because I'm not trying to slam you guys in a beginner tutorial, but we're definitely going to see these things in practice. So let's go ahead and create some space here and talk about advanced enums. And this one's going to, we're going to have a little fun with this. We're going to do a golf event enum. So the first event we're going to allow is a tee up. And like we said before, this is a unit and it's going to represent the golfer is teeing up the ball. So there's really no like values or anything involved. It's just something that's happening. The next type of event we're going to have is the golfer's drive. And I'm going to keep all of these data types as strings because it's kind of a pain to get them into like a printable statement. I don't really want to get into all that messy stuff. I don't want to really just demonstrate the enum. So you're going to see strings here, but you could do integers and stuff too. So if we're going to drive here, that string, we're going to have this function really. And it's going to allow us to basically build functions on the enum and pass strings into them. And we're going to be able to say the golfer drives the ball n yards. And then our last enum option that we're going to have is a club select. And this one's going to be a struct. So we're going to just do an inline struct here where we're going to have a club as a string and we're going to have the max yardage that that dude hits on that club as another string. Cool. And we'll just define that real quick. Struct. The golfer selects a new club. So this looks pretty wacky and you're probably wondering, okay, what does any of this even really mean? Well, Let's see it implemented with a match and you can kind of get a better glimpse of what's going on here. So if we just do like, let's do golf event as the function name. And let's say we want to pass into this function, just like we did up here with the light. We want to pass into here a golf event. And we want to get back a string, just like we did before. Same kind of uh, setup here. So match event, like earlier. And we're going to define what's going to happen for each of these golf events. Now, I'm going to copy these in real quick so you guys don't have to watch all this. Now, don't worry about initializing these ones just yet. We'll get down there. Let's start with the T up. So there's no values or anything involved. It's just a unit type, just like we saw up here with the light. So we're just going to return some kind of like generic string message. Like we're going to say the golfer is teeing up the ball. And of course we'll do that to string guy. And now for the drive, this is where things get kind of interesting. So we're going to write a little expression here. That's going to say, all right, we're going to input the amount of yards as a string. And our string that comes out is going to look like this. And you can see what we're kind of doing. We're just kind of creating a nice concatenated string here. Oh, forgot a space right here. So cool. Now we're going to actually build a function based on this right here. We can pass in this value yards and we can get what's going to be printed out here for the yards. So we're going to do something very, very similar with the struct as well. So let's see how we initialize this guy. So we're going to do club and then just like we have above max yard. And we're going to say golfer has equipped, copy this again. And this is again going to be kind of messy, but I'll try to get through it quick. And so he's equipped a club and the max yardage he's hit with that club is going to be that max yard value. Nice. All right. Nice. So, there's obviously more complicated things you can do with a struct in this situation. This is a very simple example, but 
ideally you would have an object with attributes and stuff like that that you'd be able to do things with in here. So kind of cool. Um, but all right, so let's see this in action then. We're going to write another example. And we're going to say match golf example. And this is where we're just going to like print all of these. So just like above, I'll actually copy them, try to save you guys from that a little bit. So instead of this, obviously we're going to do golf event. See, telling us again that we need to have a golf event. And copy these all in here. The first one we're going to do is, of course, the tee up. So golf event, tee up. The next one we're going to do is a golf event and we're going to do the drive and right here is where we're going to tell our function that we defined up here just how many yards this person's going to hit. Let's go with like 250. Sweet. Now, oh, oh and we're going to have to obviously put this to string. Trust me, it could be worse. This is already messy, but it could definitely be more messy trying to go from numbers and stuff. But anyway, so we're going to obviously see what that's going to give us to print out. Now, same thing goes for the struct one. If we want to just create that club select struct, and we're going to go ahead and pass in value for club. We'll go with six iron. And, oh, that's two string. And then we're also going to do max yard is going to be 175 with the six iron. That seems reasonable. Cool. All right. And now we're just going to print that example out here like we've done before. And there you go. We get our 250 that we piped in here and we get both of the values that we put in to the struct. So kind of neat. That's how you can use enums. Like basically what we have right here is we have a function, a match function that is built on an enum. And now we can just pass enums into that match function and we never have to worry about null. So that's like the biggest lesson. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about one other aspect of enums that's kind of sweet. Enums also have methods just like structs. So let's just quickly do like a basic enum that you could probably see just about anywhere. We're going to do forward and backward and then like we saw with the structs, to define methods or associated functions, you use this IMPL keyword. Same thing with enums. So we're going to just add a nice little walk function here. This is going to be a method. And we're just going to print out like walking. And then we're also going to do, and I'll label this, we're going to do an associated function. And if you remember from that previous video on structs, what the difference is, one of them is obviously referencing the self, the object itself. The other one is not. Now I'm not going to go into like how you use attributes and stuff with enums. It's a little bit complicated, like how you can make this actually referencing something of its own. It's a little bit tricky, but eventually we're going to have brand new tutorial coming out that you'll be able to check stuff like that out a little bit more advanced topics. All right, so now that we've got that set up here, let's just go ahead and create another example. And we'll just do like methods example. And we're just gonna demonstrate what each of those methods do. So if we let direction equal direction and we'll go forward, nobody wants to run backward. And we're just gonna do print line and we're gonna utilize that option filter there direction.walk. Now, if you remember from the previous situation where we tried to have this, you know, be the same kind of thing with an associated function, like if we did run here, we're not allowed to do that. Instead, this is an attribute of the enum, not the object created by the enum or with the enum. Cool. And obviously we're just going to do this as a print and we'll see that in action. See? So that's pretty cool. Enums are definitely pretty cool. And if you can really get good at these, you're going to have an easy time programming in Rust because you'll avoid a lot of headache with 
unexpected values and things like that. Thanks for watching.